Morning everybody, we're a whole minute early this morning, how are you? Um, hello Elaine and to Linda and I haven't got any messages on YouTube yet but I'm, I'm a bit early. Uh, morning Christine, Ruby, Coco. <laughs> <laughs> Morning, Linda. Uh, Christine, Sally Ann, Marion, hello to you too. Um, so I thought I saw a little dog outside, but wasn't there. Hello, Carol. I'm just going to refresh YouTube because my page is blank and I'm sure you're there. Uh, morning, Irene. Uh, hi, Carol, Celia. Hello to you, Valerie to you. Sorry if I miss anybody. Getting quite a lot of comments. Um, uh, my YouTube's just completely blank. Oh, here we go. There's loads of you. Look. Um, hello, Joe, Megan, um, Mandy, Dry and Devon. It's nice here, actually. Um, Jenna, Shirley, Ella, Grace and Sue and Anne and Mid-Julie. Hello, Clarissa and Andrea. Uh, very good. Thank you, Andrea. Hello, Robbie and um, Clarissa. Is that a different Clarissa? Um, and Sue, Biz, Rita. Hello, morning, five to six. Um, hello, Cora, Cheryl, Amanda, Alison, Sue, Jeanette, and Susan, and Sue, and Jilly, and Jennifer, and I do. Oh, there's loads of you, so welcome along. Um, but Laura Harris has requested you there. Yep, yeah, Laura. We're going to be making a piped cushion cover with a, a hidden zip at the back and um, lining. I was going to prep a little bit more this morning, but um, didn't quite have time, so we're starting from scratch. So we'll do that in a little while. I do have some new fabrics to show you, and I've got some back in stocks as well, so I wanted to show you those too. So we'll, we'll get through that quickly. Um, and I wanted to give you a big fat thank you. Um, you may have seen the post on Facebook uh, of my, my great niece, um, Hetty, who's chopped all her hair off for charity. And um, her and Lorna, my niece, have made a video because they've exceeded expectations. Their target was £100, and on last looking, it was on 815 um, and I know that's down to a lot of you, so they're, they're very, very grateful. So I have put a, a little video that they made on Facebook uh, just to say thank you. And um, my, my, uh, my niece, Lorna, has announced that if we get to a £1,000, she's going to chop her hair off as well. There you go. I think that might be by the end of the day, Lorna. Um, the bags behind me are from the show tomorrow morning on Craze and Craft. That's at 9 o'clock. They, 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 they have this habit of... Um, they're not supposed to put anything live on the show till just before nine o'clock because we sell out. We've done that before. We sold out and had nothing to, to show. Um, so I send them all the information, all of the images and all the sizes and the weights and all that, blah, blah, blah. And, um, and they put them on the website, but you can't actually buy anything. It says that an error occurs when you try to put them in the basket, but you can actually see everything on there. And then just for a few seconds on Thursday, I think it was, they went live. Laura got one <laughs> straight in there. Um, so and but you can't buy them now. But these will be kits. So the one with the flowers on it, the bamboo handled one, hasn't actually got a picture on the website, on the Create and Craft website, because I forgot to send it. So that picture won't be there until tomorrow when I go into work. Um, but that's it. It's got two handles and, and that's what it's going to look like. I think that's going to sell out. Um, the small box bag has one handle on it and that's in two colours. That's the orange. There's also a blue. And then do you remember the, um, the box drawstring bags that we made live? Um, that's a smaller version and we'll put it into kits. So there's four different colour options on that one for you. And these are some of the things that we've been making with the spring garden panels. I showed you those the other day, didn't I? I haven't got any down here. Um, but Anne made a little dress look. It's so sweet and it's got, um, it's got the pockets on the side which are made from part of the panel as well. I think that's really pretty. Wouldn't have thought of dressmaking with it, but I, it just works works really well doesn't it? it's really pretty so again those are launching tomorrow on create and craft um, and they will be available on the website but probably not till the end of next week maybe the week after because we'll have to have more fabrics reprinted for them um, Sue's just been making the half yard quilting set caddy oh lovely morning Jeanette Dull in overcast. I'm glad it's fine here today. It's a bit, it's a bit nippy, but at least it's dry. Because I'm picking my chickens up when I've finished here. I'll post your pictures. Uh, the bamboo handle one's close up. Which one? Which one would you like to see close? Well, I can see all of them if you like. Oh, that's the double one, and that's the single one. So double one opens up, so you can use it like that. 
I like it pushed in, but it's quite a roomy bag. Um, and again, you get the two handles and you get your lining fabric, your outer fabric and G700 interfacing with this one. And then this one, it's got the single handle that fastens with a magnetic snap and there's no pockets or anything on the inside. It's quite a simple bag um, and there's deck of a light in the kit for this one. So you get the handle and all the fixtures and um, your magnetic snap and everything that you need. You will need a tiny crosshead screwdriver. And of course, you've got your instructions in there as well. So those will be tomorrow at nine o'clock in the morning on Create and Craft. Um, we will be getting some more of the bamboo handles in, but the handles take about three weeks to arrive. So there, there'll be a few weeks before they get here anyway. So hey, that's that. So see you in the morning. I'm glad you like them, Linda. Uh, what should you say? Oh, Julianne's full of coal. Oh, no. Oh, we could do without that, Julianne. Morning, Jeanette. Um, oh, what's we got? Thank you, Joe. Um, Thank you, Alan. And anybody else, if you want to email into the studio, I do like to bombard the gallery. <laughs> it's um, studio at creationcraft.com. Uh, my pink parcel arrived. She says, oh, lovely. Oh, um, Eve has ordered the, uh, the Rhone Valley wine panel and doesn't know what to make with it. If anybody else has got one of those, what did you make with it? Hi, Elsie. Hi, Carol. Hello, Sue in Brisbane in Australia. Uh, look at today's tutorial. Oh, okay. Oh, she has had a mastectomy. Good for it. Oh, good, good. I'm glad she's um, glad she's going to be okay. Hopefully, that's it. And it'll be a few weeks, but hopefully that's it. Um, three foot of snow in Canada. Wow. Hello, Maria in Oslo. Right, new stuff. We have a fabric bundles for you. Um, this is brand new, only just gone on the website today, and it is six half metres of fabric for the price of five. You get one free. Now, they're all blenders, so we thought this would be a really useful um, collection for you. I did say to build your stash, but, you know, a collection of fabric. Because um, they always need a, a plane for something, don't you? So contents will vary, as they say. Um, so you may have a brush blender, you may have a... Um, a mystic vine, you might have the oriental flowers. It's, it, you, you will have, they might, might be plain, not all of them will be plain, but you may get a plain one thrown in there as well. Oh, so all three color, all six colors will be different. Um, the coronation bunting, but we're, we're not going to get that back, Andrew. I'm afraid that's, that's it. We can't get hold of any more of those. They went really quickly. Um, so yeah, they will all be different colors and they're 112 centimeters wide by half a meter. So that's the size you're going to get times six. So they're normally about four pounds a metre and you're getting a saving of four pounds because you're getting one for free. I like something for free. Um, Oakley, if you go to my website, which is Debbie Shaw, S-H-O-R-E, sewing.com, um, that's, uh, that's, that's where I'll be able to find them. Um, Planes is what run out of the most. Yeah, I use a, a lot of planes. I do have a cupboard full of planes. Because um, I use planes with practically everything. There's always, no matter how what, what kind of project you're making, there's always a plane or a blender that's needed to go with it. So it could be the back of a quilt. Oh, these are all pre-cut, by the way. So you're not going to back a quilt. It might be a small one, but you can patchwork it. Um, if it's a bag, it's going to need a lining. If it's a jacket, it's going to need it. You know, there's always a plane that needs, needs to be had. A plane needs to be had. So we thought we'd uh, give you a little treat there. Uh, for, oh, Olive's got a grand dog, a cocker spaniel, eight weeks old. Oh, I bet he smells lovely. There's nothing nicer than the smell of a puppy. Oh, <sighs> I shan't be sniffing my chickens. I don't think they're going to smell anyway. No, it's nice. Um, so that's that one. Oh, I need to. I need a bigger sewing room. Um, this is a brand new one. If you have a look under New Arrivals, you'll find all of these there. So, um, just called Clocks. I don't, I don't know why we called it Clocks, but there you go. We do have some back in stocks as well. So, but I can't remember what they're called. Oh, um, sewing Notions. If you look under back in stock, you'll find them on there anyway. 
So that's a back in stock. These are lovely quality as well. What make are they? For new, so vintage. Um, just really lovely quality. I can think of loads of things um, um, I could do with that one for around the sewing room or around the house, or as in my case, the sewing house. And remember the books fabric that we had for you a while back? We've got that back in stock as well. That went so quickly. Love to know what you're doing with that one. So there you go. I ordered Maddie Caddy from Great Craft in January, still haven't received it. Oh, Jill. Um, get back in touch with them and ask them to give you a refund. Um, I don't I don't know if I've got any Maddy Caddy kits left, but I might be able to put put something together. Oh, hi, Connie. Um, so yeah, email them, say it's not arrived, and um, they will refund you. And then can you drop me an email? Because I'll forget. Um, and it's the enquiries at debbieshawsewing.com. If you go to the website, there's a contact page on there. And um, I'll, I'll see what... I'll see what I can sort out. It might be a couple of days because we'll be busy after Crate and Craft tomorrow, but we'll see what we can do. Um, okay, so that's that one. These are quite special. You may have seen the Lynette Anderson fa uh, flowers fabrics before, but this is extra wide. So the width of the fabric is that it's. 247 centimetres, so it's just under two and a half metres in length. So for quilt backing, but you know, this is so pretty. I don't know if I'd want to put it on the back or something. Um, so, it, you know, if you're bag making, if you're making curtains, if you're making larger items, or if you just want a huge piece of fabric that's great value, then that's going to be the one to go for. So that's the extra wide. And we also have the extra wide in a grey marbled. So I think we call this light grey textured. It's got a nice sheen to it. It's not metallic, but it does have a nice sheen. And again, that is 247 wide. So that is half of what you get. It's twice that width. It's massive. And there's also, I haven't got a piece here with me, but we do have the white one, uh, white on white with squiggles on it back in stock as well. So we haven't really brought you an awful lot of extra wides before, but... Um, we just thought we'd try it and see if you like it. I love this one. Look, it's so big I can't even fold it now. Bear with me a sec. How do you fit a, a fit a button magnetic snap? A button magnetic snap. I don't know what a button magnetic snap is. What's it look like? A duvet. Oh, that would be. Oh, that would be nice, wouldn't it? Um, do I, do I ever feel? in the sewings house rather than the other way around. <laughs> our, our whole house, Sarah, is there's not, not a space left unturned, particularly when we've got a, a crate and craft show coming up. Uh, what's the chicken? What's what, what, what chicken? What chicken? Um, I've got chickens on the brain at the moment, so I, I'll, be, I'll be picking them up in a bit. Three little ones, two silkies and a little grey thing. Um, right. No, I shall be just promoting Half Yard Club on um, at Stitch Festival. We haven't actually got a stand of our own there. Um, Search Press had a stand anyway, so we've kind of nestled in there and uh, taken over a little bit. Um, Karen, uh, curtain making, absolutely perfect with the, with the uh, extra wide. And I think with the floral, you could actually use that as, you know, the, the outer curtain, so you don't have to join it. Um, oh, my son rescued four silkies. Oh, they're, they're good, um, good little uh, mothers, aren't they, silkies? They, they do like to sit on eggs. The mouse is there. You, do, you just have to look harder. Right, let's get this done. Have we got Laura? Sorry if, if you're there, Laura, I didn't see you. I haven't seen a message yet. Um, so this is from the chrysanthemum panel. And we did do a kit for Create and Craft, but the panel's on its own on the website now. So you get four squares, and they're all chrysanthemums, but they're all slightly different. And it goes perfectly well with the chrysanthemum red plane that we've got on the website. And I've got a zip, and I've got red piping, which I don't think we've got, um, we've got stock of. Could be a Mother's Day gift, Deirdre. 
I'll tell you what would make a nice Mother's Day gift. That's the second project from the Half Yard Club. Um, there's a, there's not a video with this one because it's a secondary project, but I am going to do a quick video on stitches and how to make the rosettes. Because, you know, it's ever so difficult to actually explain how to do something like that. Um, so it's, a, it's a, a simple design. It's quite time consuming. It took me all day to do it. Um, but I really enjoyed kind of sitting and relaxing and all of these are, are done by hand. So, yeah. um, so that will be with you on the 15th if you're a Half Yard Club member. Try and get some of that felt in as well. I just use a natural felt, but it kind of it works really well with that one, doesn't it? Yeah, I thought so. So yeah, that's that's um, that's what I've got in mind for Mother's Day. Um, you did extra wide fabric really quickly. Um, who's that, Mari? We've got the floral one. We have a grey one. These are 240 centi 247 centimetres wide, so just under two and a half metres long. And we do have a white on white swirly one as well. Hi, thank you, Shirley. So, right, I've, so I was going to prep a little bit beforehand, but um, I had rather a busy morning this morning. Um, so we put the piping on first. So I know we've seen piping before, so I'm not going to um, take too much time doing it. It is felt, Sylvia. Yeah, I, I thought that would be nice. Um, so I'm going to st I'm going to put the zipper foot on my sewing machine first of all, and I'll just explain what I'm doing as I'm going around. But again, we've, we've spent a couple of um, lives doing get on um, piping, so I don't want to I don't want to bore you silly with it. So I'm going to start round about in the centre leave a little bit of piping overhanging at the end because we want to overlap that when we get back to the beginning to make it match. So let's do that, needle down, and just sew all the way around. As you come up to the corners, I'm just going to snip into the flange of the piping, so up to the stitches, not through, and that allows you to take the piping around, I have to switch my machine off, um, take the piping around the corner. Now you're not going to get a perfect right angle and um, that's the nature of working with piping. So expect that to be a little bit curvy. And I'm sewing quite close to the piping. Don't stretch the piping cord as you're sewing because this is um, this is actually a knit fabric and it does have a little bit of stretch. A lot of piping cords will be bias cut. And if you stretch, um, it's all going to pucker up. We don't want that to happen. So again, let's just snip into the curve there. And the fabric with the sewing notions. Do you know, I can't remember what it is, Carol. Um, I'll have a look in a minute. I'll have a look on the website, see if I can find it. Um, if my daughter's watching, she'll know. She put it back in stock this morning. But I think she's busy. We're, we're looking after Vienna this weekend. So they're getting ready and packing and coming up. So again, just down to this end. When I re-sew on the back of this, I will sew a tiny bit closer to the actual piping cord to make it a nice fit. So around the corner we go. And back down this side. So I'm rushing a little bit, but I, I'm aware we've seen piping to death. Um, hope your mum is doing well, sending it. Oh, oh. Sorry, missed that one. Oh, hang on a minute. No, I didn't. Um, I have some dehydrated rose and lavender. I can make one for my mum. She's in her eight. She's blind and deaf, but I know it still works. That's a perfect Mother's Day gift. Um, yeah, I do say in the instructions to maybe put a little bit of essence in the... Um, in the toy filler when you when you come to stuff it, but um, yeah, lavender would be perfect, and maybe hang it over the the bed head if she has one. Be a nice idea. Um, and if she's blind, she can actually feel the roses as well because they're they're ribbons, so they're three dimensional. So that's a lovely idea, Biz. All right, round the corner we go, and then we're coming back to the beginning. So I'm just going to snip that off so that the ends overlap a little bit and let's go a little bit closer here. 
do. Vintage sewing cotton. Thank you, Gina. Right, now I want the ends of the cord to meet but um, and the fabric to overlap. So I'm going to snip that one off. I'll unpick a few stitches down here, just on the inside of the piping, uh, the inside of the flange, sorry. So just open that up. And I think that will do. And then I'm going to snip off the cord from the middle of there. And then this side of the cord, I want it to meet that piece there. So let's snip that so that it's the same. Or so it meets. So I've got this end will now sit inside that end. So if I fold this over, just to make it neat, slip that one inside and wrap that one around. And then I've got a barely visible join. So I'll just hold that in place while we go back to the sewing machine. And down you go. And sew straight across. Right, so that's, I'm going to just trim that back so it's straight. Oh, that could have gone under there a little bit more. I've sewn it now. I'll tell you what, not the end of the world. That needs to poke inside there. And that needs to go around the edge of that. So what I'm going to do is to take a tiny little bit of wet fabric glue, which is all bunged up, which is always the case, isn't it? I don't know why that's happened. There we go. And I'm just going to put that on the end of my pin dab some right on the end of that cord so it doesn't actually go in the piping I'm just putting it inside the cord and I'm just going to push that inside so that's where I wanted it to be that's what happens when you rush isn't it right I might go back and do a neater job of that later on you don't want to sit and watch me do that do you but not to the end of the world when things like that happen it's um mending is quite doable. That will do for now. Poked it back in again. Any idea when the small plackets of bond web will be back in? I don't, Sarah. I didn't know we'd run out. I'll, um, I shall ask my daughter to have a look. Uh, can you add the sewing room notion fabric to my cart, please? I live in the Caribbean. I've wanted the fabric so long. Um, I, I can't add anything to your cart, I'm afraid, Carol, on the website. I, I don't... We don't have permission to mess around in your carts, so um, I'm afraid you need to do that yourself. Um, I can't find it on the website. Let me have a look. Let me have a look. I should have made a note, really, of what the fabric was called, shouldn't I? Uh, so, so I'm just going on the website. Oh, we are slow today on this website. Um, right. Have a look under back in stock. Oh, we've got quite a few back in stocks. Um, what did somebody say that it was called? Vintage. Vintage something. So I just type that into the search bar and see what comes up there. There you go. Vintage sewing cotton cream. So if you type vintage into uh, the search bar and then just scroll down, and there it is. So you should be able to put that in your basket now. And the clocks one is also there. Uh, I've just noticed there, Victorian vintage books. We've also got Victorian vintage flights. We've got quite a few from these. And the vintage clocks is the new one. So, so that's, that's what we need to do. Um, right, let me, just, let me just get you back again. Whoa, I didn't know we could do that. That was, that was a bit fancy. That was, we went a little bit Doctor Who then, didn't we? <laughs> oh, thank you. Um, thank you, Sarah. She's just put a post, um, a link on uh, Facebook to that fabric. Thank you. Um, Sarah is um, moderating on the Facebook page. So if you see comments coming up and I'm not typing anything, it's come from Sarah. Okay. 
so let's put the zip in the back now so the two back pieces are slightly longer um, as in that's the size of the square these are longer I, I haven't got the exact size but um, well, the sound's going in and out oh I don't know I would, we seem to be okay here Rita maybe it's because I did that funny Doctor Who thing um, so the smaller piece is the bottom piece the top piece is going to wrap over so uh, lay the zip face down and I'm just going to sew along the zip tape just there so I've still got the zipper foot on the sewing machine and the zip's a little bit too long but that means that I don't have to maneuver around metal stoppers so you can go in there and we'll sew straight down the centre of the zip tape. Right up to the other end. And then when I get here, I can chop the end of the zip off. Oh, oh. Or what I could do is actually go back again and, and put some more th thread in my bobbin. That wasn't very well timed, was it? What have we got? That will do. I'll just go for a neutral one. Um, yeah, Laura says a vintage clock great for, for, great for a men's bag. That's a good idea. Um, Jane says... Oh no, Leslie, moved to YouTube as my sound on Facebook was going in and out. I don't, I don't know why, because my sound level here is fine and no alarm bells ringing on my software. Right, just build this up. Hold, hold the line a moment. Oh, take me long. Um, let me get this zip put in. I hate filling bobbins up, don't you? Really not... Oh. Not my favourite thing to do. Like putting petrol in the car. Not my favourite thing to do. Right, do that, that. And on there. Okay, then I'll, I'll re-sew it. There we go. Then we'll chop off the end of the fabric, uh, the end of the zip. Right, so, when using a fusible bow saw, do you stick it right, stick it right to the edge before inserting a zip? Um, oh, it depends what you're making, Eleanor. I don't know if I'd use bow saw around a zip, so I might just, um, yeah, trim it back to the seam a little bit. Okay, and then I'm going to fold this over and just top stitch along the side there. I'm going to put the other foot back on my machine again. I'm not, not very good at top stitching with the zipper foot on. Cheaper to fill a bobbin up than to put petrol in the car. I'll stick with filling the bobbins up. <laughs> Pity we can't invent a car that runs on thread. Can you imagine? Just going to wind the bobbin up, love. Right, so I'm, I'm pulling this away from the zip and just top stitching. I'm just on the one side. Hi, Shirley Hurley. Like that. And then the second side goes over the top. I'm just going to switch my iron on because I'll need that in a second. Oh, it's already on. Almost like I planned it. So, this goes on the top here. And we'll sew along the second side of the zip. So with this zip, it does go straight into the seam at each end. I'm just going to move that needle over a little bit, actually. That's better. A bit more. Um, at, at each seam at the side, it does go straight into the seam there. So it is going to be a little bit bulky when we've got the piping on there as well, but that's fine. Right, sir. 
Um, and then I'm going to open this up, open the zip slightly and just sew the ends of the zip together. And that's going to make it easier when we come to the next bit because I don't want that zip to open um, as we're piecing this together. So I'm just going to put that down there and just go over there and go back again. And then snip that off. And then we'll have the ironing pad. So remember, this is the, the top. The larger section is the top. And I'm just going to press this. And that. And then we need to fold this part over the zip just so that you cover the stitch line there. So not too much else, you're going to find it quite fiddly to actually access the zip to open and close it. Um, I had a little best, oh there it is. I'm just going to give that a spray best press because it doesn't look as though it's creasing too easily. And that's better. So I fold over and press and then I'll put a few pins along here as well. And then we'll sew it. So I'm pinning, in fact we'll pin on this side. So I don't have to take the pins out when I'm sewing. See you later then Jenny. Nice to have you company this morning. Can you suggest what stabilizer to get the H somethings you always use for, for fact? Um, H640 and H630 are the two fusible fleeces that I use mostly. H, in fact, H640 is the, um, is the one that I use most. I'm just looking to see if I've got any here. Oh, I've got a little bit here. Is that 30 or 40? That's 40. So H640 is a little bit firmer, a little bit thicker than H630, but it's still nice and soft. That's what we've got in the, the two drawstring bags there. So that's, that's the one that I use most of all. Uh, the spray, oh, thank you, Michaela, is Best Press. It's a starchless starch, basically, a clear starch and sizing alternative. Um, and it smells nice as well. It's rose flavoured. Hello, Mary. Right. And then I'm going to sew from the top, but I'll need to stitch the top part of the zip, but I'm going to sew from the top because that's what you see. So I can feel where the, um, where the zip tape is and I might need to maneuver around that bit actually. So let's feel where, there we go. So I'm just going to move the needle over to the left again and then just sew alongside the zip. So I can feel where the zip is and sewing from this, it'd be easier to sew from the other side because I can actually see the zip. But um, when you sew from this side, like I said, that's the bit that you see. So I've got less risk of having a wobbly line as I'm sewing. So I'm, again, just feeling where the ridge is of the zip coil and running the edge of the foot alongside it. If you can't feel the edge of the zip, you could always run a little bit of chalk along it and then brush it away afterwards. So that should be the zip nicely sewn in. And it's all hidden under there, so it doesn't really matter if you've got a zip that's a, that's a different colour to what you wanted. So just pop those back in the pink cushion. And then we'll put it together. So I'll need the zipper foot, uh, yeah, the zipper foot back on the machine because I'll be sewing around piping. Um, on you go, right. So this is how you layer. Backstitching when I start and finish. I will backstitch unless 
the, the stitch that I'm sewing is going into another seam. So for instance, at each end of the zip there is going into another seam, so I, I don't normally backstitch then. Um, but if I'm, yes, if, I, if I'm not going into another seam, then yes, I would definitely backstitch. So you know, if you're sewing dividers down pockets and things like that, definitely backstitch. Um, okay, is that, uh, that's all dried now. Right, so this is, this is your layer. So that's the lining facing upwards. And then we'll have the outer panel facing downwards. So outer and lining right sides together. I know this is um, a little bit smaller, so I need to trim that down to size as well. So I'll do that now. I'd normally use my rotary cutter ruler and mat, but um, scissors might be quicker here. Okay, and I'm just going to sew part way along the seam here, so around about five inches or so, enough to kind of so I can turn it the right side out. I will undo the zip, Sylvia. All right, so that goes under there, and I'm sewing from this side because I want to sew just inside. There we go. Why aren't you moving? Right. Well, I'll just move you then. Just inside the stitch line that I've already sewn. Oh, now you've done it, haven't you? There. That's it. Okay, so either on top of the stitches or just inside that seam, but only kind of a scant amount, as in the width of your thread. And we'll cut that. So I've only sewn that little bit there. And then with the zip open, We're going to put the lining on. So I'll just find the lining. That's going to go on top of the back. Okay. We should pin that really. So I'm just trying to line this up so that the edges match. That's it. And that goes on top of there like that. Okay, and I will stick a few pins in this one to hold it together. Don't know what my neighbours are doing, but there's a lot of noise going off down there, so I do, do apologise. Um, I'll pin from this side so I can see where the pins go because I'm going to sew from this side. And. Line those up. Make sure I've got the corners covered. And there. So lots of pins in this case. That's it. Just make sure we've got all of those layers all together. Right there into the corner. I don't know why the sounds um, odd on YouTube because things are going out from here perfectly fine so I'm going to blame YouTube for that one. But that's entertaining isn't it if everything's all out of sync. Uh, right, hello Linda in Ohio and Sylvia and Kissy me. So Where's the bit that I've already sewn? <laughs> here. So from where the bit I've already sewn, which is here, so that's already sewn to the back of the, um, the cushion cover, I'm going to start sewing here, go all the way around and finish here, and that's going to be my turning gap. All right. A lot of people's YouTube is okay, so I, I don't think it's a me problem, that one. 
Uh, okay, so let's keep this nice and flat. And I'm going to go as close, well, a little bit closer than the previous stitching so I can feel and I can see the lump where the, the piping is. And I'm trying to sew quite close to it. There will be, you know, when I turn this the right side out, sometimes you don't get quite close enough. Sometimes there's a little bit of a gap. But you can always go back around it again afterwards. So don't expect it to be absolutely perfect the first time you do this. So again, coming up to the corners. It's the corners actually, you tend to go a little bit wide on them sometimes, but it's not an issue to go back over them. I'll explain that when we turn it the right side out. Back down here. Almost there. We do have another flower panel coming. Um, I've got another show on Creation Craft on the 14th and 15th, I think, whatever the Saturday and Sunday is in April. And we've got the one day special. So we've got some new panels and um, there'll be some new bags, some new kits. Oh, I haven't gone all the way around, have I? No, I'm going to there. I thought I'd, I thought I'd sewn my um, turning gap closed. And next Sunday is, um, is Seamless Sunday, the Seamless Sunday special. So that's the six hour show that I do every six weeks. I don't know who's on it yet. We've got a meeting on Monday when they'll fill me in. Um, but that's loads of fun if you want to spend some time with us on a Sunday morning. So uh, it goes live at seven o'clock in the morning all the way through to one. And I don't have a break. Okay, so the ladies to oh oh talking to each other, lovely. Um, Michaela's Facebook is okay. Don't know what's up with that one. Um, so I'm trying not to miss your comments. Um, anyone have a Juki NX7? Oh, just ordered one. Oh no, I don't. But it's a Juki, so it's going to be um, it's going to be good, isn't it? Uh, Kate's in Perth in West Australia. Hello. <gasps> right. So let's see what happens. The idea with putting the lining in, I should have explained earlier on, is, um, is literally to hide any of the, um, the raw edges on the inside. So if you're giving this as a gift or uh, selling what you're making, it's just quite nice to have that, um, that kind of finish on the inside. So let's trim the corners back a little bit. And then we'll turn it the right side out. That can be trimmed back again as well. And see what happens. And hopefully I've got the layers in the right order. So where's that turning? There's my turning gap. So let's turn this one through first of all. It's a lined, zipped, piped cushion cover, Anne. Best filling for pink cushions. Um, lots of different ideas there, Rosemary. Mine's just toy filler. Um, you could put um, like a scouring pad in there, that kind of thing, keep your pins nice and sharp. Um, what anybody else's ideas? Be good, be good to hear from you. So we turn it through once and you've got the turning gap here. I would suggest you sew this closed by hand because if you, that's the seam on the outside, that's where the piping is. So if you sew that by machine and you overlap that seam, it'll distort the shape of your cushion. So I would do a little slip stitch just inside the seam allowance and close that over and then we'll turn the whole thing through again and check the piping. Um, and just make sure that that's all nice and neat and tight. So as I said, it's normally the corners that you might want to get a little bit closer on when you do this. But I think we're okay. I think I'm happy with that. So that's said cushion from the front 
and the back. And when you do look on the inside, that's the turning gut. There's no raw edges. Everything is completely concealed inside there. So it really does give a very professional look. I was toying, uh, Laura, with the idea of lining this side as well. And I thought, you know, I don't think it really needs it at all. But you could put a lining on this side. Um, but I don't think it needs it. That you've, you've done what you wanted to do, which was to conceal all of the seams, uh, all of the raw edges on the inside. So that was that. Do you know, I thought that was going to take so long to make, but it was actually quite, quite quick. I'm going to iron it and find a cushion pad to put inside it and use it. Um, this panel, are we out of stock of this one? We'll have to order some more of that one then. It has been really popular. And again, there, there will be um, a matching, well, it's not matching, another flower panel um, for the Crate and Craft launch in April. So that's quite exciting. The yellow one this time. Um, Sally says, bless all who have to shovel snow. No snow, snow in South Pennsylvania. It's been unusual. We haven't really had much snow, have we? I don't like the snow. I like looking at the snow, I don't like being in the snow. Uh, no, I'm, I wasn't going to do a tutorial for this one. I, I may do, at some point, a lined cushion cover. But um, not for this particular one, I don't have any plans at the moment. A doll sleeve pressing ham. You could make one. I did make one actually, it was in um, my So Youth, no, Sewing Room Accessories, so, oh, was So Useful, one of the other, Sewing Room Accessories, um, which was shaped to iron bags specifically, because I'll use the, the seam press, you know, the, um, the long thin one, the sleeve one, um, inside bags, but I actually made one with a big square base, so you just push it inside the bag and then iron all the seams over it. Quite easy to make, just full of sawdust, just a bag of sawdust. Um, 24 centimetres of snow on Friday, Biz. Ooh, that's, that's a lot. Oh, I'm glad you liked it, Sarah. So, yep, so, so that's it. So it is quite quick. It's only taken half an hour to do that. Um, but it, I think it's a really effective way of, of concealing the zip for a start. Um, but also, as I said, no raw edges on the inside. Would like the same, but with an invisible zip. I did toy with the idea of putting an invisible zip in this one, and you know it's really bulky, Gillian, with with um, with just a seam, fine. But putting an invisible zip in with piping as well can be quite tricky, which is why I, I went for the concealed zip at the back there. Um, the zips, I haven't them here, have I? The zips that were in the Alice in Wonderland cushions were invisible zips, and this one. Might demo this on Crate and Craft tomorrow. That's a box cushion and it's got the zip across the bottom. Um, so it's only Diddy one, but it's the same technique as if you were going to make a, you know, a big one to go on a, a garden chair or something like that. Thank you, Linda. Oh, two Lindas. Two Lindas together with Ys. Uh, sounds just come back on a PC. Boo, June. The cushion comes up. Oh, thank you, lovely and neat. Do me best. Doesn't always work, but I do my best. Um, okay, then, I'm going to go and get chickens. I shall put a picture on Facebook later on of my new brood. See what you think. I'm going to put that foot back on there before I lose it as well. Uh, zips in the back as opposed to on the tops of cushions. I think I do, Julie, actually, because I very rarely turn them over, so you just, you just get a really nice clean line around the, the edge of your cushion, don't you? The box cushion made with one piece of fabric. Um, it's from the panel, Deirdre. Um, I haven't got one down here with me. It's from a panel that we're doing on Crate and Craft tomorrow. And there are four squares uh, with big pictures on them. And then this is actually one panel. That's not a seam. It's, it's, it's one big long, well, two strips, two prints in one long strip of fabric. So four images, two of those. And you'll get lilac fabric with this one. There is a green option. And you get olive fabric with that one. And the instructions are for a gardening apron and the little zip bag at the back and the box cushion cover so you get three sets of instructions with that one as well 
Um, what pad do you use? This one, Linda, they've got toy filler in them because they hadn't got a pad small enough. Um, but they'd be 10 inch, 10 inch cushion pads, just, just ordinary cushion pads, not, not a specific boxed one. And old oh, Jeanette, um, I was saying this on, on Wednesday, so sorry if I'm repeating myself, but we've allowed the granddaughters to name the chickens. Um, so Vienna's is called A1. I don't know why, but she wanted to call it A1. And Beatrix's is going to be called Pom Pom, which is a bit more appropriate because they do have pom poms on their heads. And then there's a little grey one and my, um, my little grandson is only two years old and doesn't really understand what's going on. But he does love vehicles, so the girls have decided that they're going to call it Truck. So I've got A1, Pom Pom and Truck. Great chicken names. Uh, the Tree Fabric. That only came back in stock yesterday, Lorraine. Have we sold out again? A1 is a steak sauce in the US. Is it? it is, it's a motorway here. Um, if we've sold out of the tree fabric again, is that the, the mulberry tree one? Yes, we will be getting it back in stock. We can get hold of that quite quickly. So I'll double check what stock we've got and um, how much we need to order. Um, so that, that could be here by Wednesday, Thursday, something like that, if we've sold out. Um, here, tricky, tricky. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. Here, yeah, tricky, tricky. Pop, 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 pop. Um, one of our twins named our fish four pounds. <laughs> oh, my, uh, my eldest lad, who will be 42 in a couple of weeks. I know. Or next week. 42 next week. Um, he had four goldfish when he was younger, and he called them all Michael. There was a weatherman called Michael Fish, but they were all called Michael. Royal Mail for delivery or every. Um, Anne, Royal Mail seemed to be back on track again. So um, in the UK, I don't know where you are, but in the UK, if you spend under £25, we use Royal Mail. If you spend over £25, we use DPD. Um, we don't use DPD for Northern Ireland or North Scotland because it goes into parcel brackets and it's, it's really expensive. So those parcels, no matter how much you spend, will go Royal Mail. And we have started using Royal Mail for International Post again because they're supposedly back on track. Because every were fine, but they took weeks for deliveries to arrive. So we, we decided to go back to, um, um, to that one. So are, are you incognito? <laughs> oh, thank you, Sally. H hardly, I don't think so. Um, I am going to enjoy the chickens. I can't wait to get them. Um, because I know, Julie. Um, Tyler, when he was little, Tyler will be 28 next week as well. The two boys are two days apart, 14 years and two days apart. Um, he used to collect snails in the garden and call them all sport. And Kim didn't like them. Kim didn't like those snails at all. But yeah, he just collect them in a box. Why well, he called his snails sport? Just all sport. Don't know why. Um, my eldest is 55 this year. I don't. I don't know how it happens, Olive. I mean, he was only five last week. I just. I don't. Don't know how it happens. Righty ho. I better go. Uh, go and get me trucks. I shall see you again on, well, Crate and Craft tomorrow morning at nine o'clock, remember. If you do want to order anything, you can take a look um, on their website. And I, I did say before, but the only one that isn't, the picture that isn't there is the one with the round bamboo handles. Um, but you won't be able to order. I forgot to send the picture in. That's why it's, oh, it's my fault. Um, but that, th there will be a picture tomorrow morning. But all, everything else is actually on there, but it won't let you add it to the basket because they put the products live just before nine o'clock in the morning. So if there's, uh, if you have a look, see if there's anything that you want, and then just make sure you're there at nine be before things sell out. So I'll see you then. Email the studio if you like. That's how we do it. Like it, keep them busy in the gallery. And otherwise, I shall see you again on Wednesday afternoon at four o'clock. So enjoy the rest of your weekend. Thanks for joining me. Bye bye. <laughs>